Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, it might not be the way you want it to be. But you can sing this song with me. I can I can remember. Sister Wood, Sister Hightower, from the other side of the church, she would say, It's another day's journey, and I'm glad. of y'all happy enough here I'm, I'm feeling kind of churchy here this morning he gave me health and strength and I'm glad you have taken in your journey he has been with you amen hallelujah thank God for the victory hallelujah praise God anyhow well we want to welcome everyone to perfecting church hallelujah 1045 service and we are excited to have you here today worshiping God with us we want to also welcome those that are in our cyber sanctuary for joining with us we promise you that this is going to be a service that where you experience the moving and the power of God. Amen. And for those of you who are in our cyber sanctuary, where we want you to put in the comment section, if you're a visitor, if you are from out of town, let us know where you're from. And we would like to just reach out to you and just love on you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, at this time, we're going to go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Hallelujah. We thank you for your strength on today, Lord God. Thank you for your power that's working. Hallelujah. Not only in our lives, but around our lives. 
We thank you, Lord God, that you will heal, save, and deliver. We thank you for the word that will be coming forth by our bishop, Lord God. Anoint him afresh, O oh God. Hallelujah. Let the words that come out of his mouth be transforming to the lives that hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, our scripture reading will be coming from Psalms 34. If you have your Bibles, we're going to read 1 through 6. Psalms 34, starting at verse 1, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Well, I'm going to stop right there at verse 3. Let us magnify the Lord. Can you just magnify the Lord with me? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, praise God. Y'all ready to praise the Lord with me? Hallelujah. Our praise team will be coming. Hallelujah. And we thank God for them. Hallelujah. I want you to welcome our praise team. Amen. Come on and put your hands together and bless the name of Jesus. We all can testify that the Lord has done something for us. He woke you up this morning. Jesus, I'm from me all the way. Carry my burdens every day. Such a wonderful Savior. Never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Help me sing. Jesus, you brought me all the way. You carry my, carry my burdens every day. Such a wonderful, such a wonderful Savior. Never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me. I can't forget, 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 I can't for
If your child is not registered, you bring your uh, come to the middle aisle with your child and follow them, and they're gonna go to the chapel so you can register your child. They have to be registered, amen. Your child has to be registered, amen. Come on, children, click, clap, 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 like it's their first day of the babies. <laughs> bring your gifts. Amen. Amen. Look at all these babies. Bring your gifts. Hallelujah. Keep clapping, keep clapping. They still coming. They still coming. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Hallelujah. We thank God for our children. Praise God for them. Oh, it's a whole bunch of them, ain't it? Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Well, at this time, we're going to have our moment of exhortation. Hallelujah. By our very own Minister Mike Sears. And after Mike Sears, we're going to have our mass choir. Please welcome Minister Mike Sears. Hallelujah. Has the Lord done anything for you? Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. When I started off in the, in the word, I mean, yes, hallelujah. The saints of God used to say something. They used to say, the race is not given to the swift, but he that endureth to the end. And as somebody new in the church, I wanted to search the scriptures because you know what? We need a word from the Lord. We can't just go by sayings and what people say, but we actually got to have a word from the Lord. So when I looked into the Bible and I, I sought out the scriptures, I found out what it, what it actually says. And it's, and it's just simple. It's Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. I call it my emergency scripture. Every now and then you got to have something that you can just go to, that you can hold on to, and it'll help you in times of trouble. Amen? It simply says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, nor but time and chance happen to them all. Now, you might be saying, now, how is that relevant to being an emergency scripture? Well, let me tell you. See, it's not about being the fastest. It's not about being the strongest. You don't have, you don't have to be the, the smartest. But time and chance happeneth to them all. See, see a lot of y'all thought y'all was disqualified. But now you realize I'm in, the, I'm in that number. God is looking out for me. The only thing that I have to do is be ready. Now, there's a difference between being ready and getting ready. If I show up to your house and I say I'll be there in five minutes and I get there and you're still getting ready, you say I'll be out in another five minutes, that means you wasn't ready. But if I show up and you're ready to walk out the door, that means you're ready. According to this scripture, time and chance happens to them all. Not just some of us, not just most of us, but to them all. If you don't believe me, then think about the man that was at the pool of Bethesda. He sat there for 38 years because he thought he wasn't fast enough. But when God, when he met Jesus, he said, do you want to be saved? He told him to take up his bed and walk. If that's not enough, David thought, they thought David wasn't strong enough. But God had anointed him to be king. Because he, he didn't look like the king, but according to God, he said, it's not about the outward appearance, but it's about who I say. Hallelujah. If that's not enough, what about Rahab? She, she didn't have the best reputation, but because she believed, because she believed, because of her faith, God saved her and her household. That's just a few examples. Now fill in your name. Put your name in the blank and know that time and chance happens to us all.
Let us receive the founder and pastor of Perfecting Church, Bishop Elect Marvin L. Winans. Wow, wow, wow. Come on and give God praise. Oh, come on and praise him like you know him. I needed more grace, more than I thought I ever. Gave more than I thought you ever could. I was stronger in my head, but truth is, I need no. Thank you for your loving favor, for the multitude of your tender mercies. Thank you for your grace that covers us. The unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor of God. The reflection in the life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your word flow today. We give you praise. We glorify your name. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And every glad heart said amen. amen. Would you give God praise? Let's praise God. I need your grace. Thank you for 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 your grace. Hallelujah. 
give God praise for all of those that are joining us by way of streaming. Thank you so much for being present in the cyber sanctuary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want everyone to be here this Friday. Uh, we're inviting everyone to join us this Friday here at 7616 East Nevada for our Good Friday service. We will be in the great company of Pastor Devin Golf and the Revival Tabernacle Church. They will be here and uh, we will be presenting the last seven words, the seven last words of Christ, uh, our ministers, their ministers. You really want to be here. The choir is going to be a wonderful time as we partake of the Lord's Supper. So please, everyone be here. The service will be uh, began at 12 noon, and uh, we're going to have a wonderful time in that hour. Amen? Amen. Next Sunday. Yeah. Next Sunday is the Sunday. Look at your name and say, next Sunday is the Sunday. Now, I, know, I know we have 52 Sundays in a year, but look at them and say with some, some uh, definition, say, next Sunday is the Sunday. Because if next Sunday didn't happen, we would, we would still be in our sins. Next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. And I know he got up. He got up early one Sunday morning. So next Sunday, you want to be here next Sunday as we will have a resurrection service our children, our uh, fine arts department, our choirs, you want to be here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. Amen. And we want you to invite your family and your friends. Service is going to begin at 12 noon. There will not be 1145. There will not be 3 o'clock. We will only have one service, and that will be at 12 noon. So set your calendars, set your clock and be here at 12 noon as we will just praise him for doing what no other could do. Hallelujah. My yanda la ba ba ba. Hey, glory, glory. Hallelujah. We are in full convocation mode and um, uh, all of the information for Holy Convocation 2024 is available in the corridor or on the PFI website at www.pfi.world. That's www.pfi.world. And we want everyone to be in Arlington, Texas. Texas is a big state. We don't want you down in Houston or out in El Paso. We want you in Arlington, Texas on the May the 20th through the 24th. And we want everyone to be there. Uh, they're coming from everywhere, and it's going to be a wonderful time, and uh, I want you to be there. Grab your Bibles if you don't mind. I'm sure you don't mind. Today is known throughout the Christian world as Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Let's turn to the gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. We're going to read into your hearing the 12th through the 15th verse, and then we'll jump down to the 23rd verse. John 12 and 12. Those of you that are watching by way of streaming, please grab your Bibles and join in with us. If you have the gospel according to John, the 12th chapter, and the 12th verse indicate 
by shouting amen. amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hear the beginning of the reading of God's word. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried Hosanna blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord and Jesus when he had found a young ass set down thereon as it is written Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass's colt. Let's jump down to the 23rd verse, if you will. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Look at your neighbor and repeat our subject. Neighbor. neighbor. From, praise From praise to glory. To glory. All right. You, got it now. You, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified from praise to glory. Let's look at our text beginning at the 12th verse. It says, on the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. Point number one. Tell your neighbor, this is point number one. He's coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were going to come to the feast, some of them. But when they heard that Jesus was coming. Uh, some more decided to come to the feast. Now, let me, let me say this before I get real excited. That some things need to be honored and kept every year. Because it is just that noteworthy. They were coming during this time for the Passover. They were gathering because this is huge in the historicity of the nation of Israel. This was a command that was given by God that they should remember the time of the Passover every year throughout all their generations because this is when God sent that death angel and delivered them out of Egypt. So now some things in your life you can't forget. I never shall forget today. Hallelujah. The choir sings that song. I remember that day. There's some, some things you... But they seemingly stepped up their movement into Jerusalem when they heard that Jesus was coming. The problem that we are having in the church is that we, the fact that we have become so caught up in the busyness of life that we forgot he's coming. When we make excuses 
as to why we are not involved in ministry or doing the will of God as we should when other secular things override our spiritual uh, calendar. It is because we forgot he's coming. Because when you are aware of his coming, it should elicit a response. You cannot really know that Jesus is coming and remain the same. Tell your neighbor he's coming. Yeah, that's the reason I had to walk away from what I was doing because I realized... <laughs> Y'all going to help me preach this morning. Uh, that's the reason I had to quit that and stop that and uh, delete that from my life because I discovered he's coming. And, and, and he didn't give me the exact day of the hour. So as the preacher said during the exhortation, I got to be ready. <laughs> And when you really believe he's coming, it changes your lifestyle. I, I, I wish I got a better amen and I could move on to point number two. But y'all ain't saying nothing. See, if you remain in sin, if you stay stuck, if you allow the work of the flesh to continue to hold you back, it is a sign that you are uh, unaware of his coming. But if you know he's coming, you get everything out the way. Tell somebody he's coming. Yeah, that's the reason I'm headed back. The song the saints used to sing was, I'm going back to Jesus. I'm going back to Jesus. I'm going where the living waters flow. I hear my Savior calling and redemptive peers, tears are falling. My heart's turned back to Jesus and I must go. Ah, what a wonderful understanding is that sometimes we do get caught up in the busyness of life and we find ourselves drifting away from God. But it's wonderful to know that I can come back to him. Look at your neighbor and say, he's coming, he's coming. And I got to get ready. Uh, Jesus said to be ye also ready. Point number one, he's coming. Point number two, look at your neighbor and say, this is point number two. If we look at verse 13, it says in verse 13, and they took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him. When you have expectation of his coming, you actually move in his direction. It's not like you just stay back and wait for him to come swipe you up. You moving towards him. If I, if I had some help, I wouldn't be able to preach much longer. You see, when we understand the truth of the prodigal, we understand that when he came to himself, he said, I'm going home. But the Bible says, but while he was yet a great way off, his father ran out to meet him, which says something about the father. It says, the father said, I'm not going to hold you back. You want to go, go. But your leaving does not change my expectation. I know what I asked you to be. I know what I called you to be. I know what I've trained you to be. And uh, even though you seemingly walked away and joined yourself to another country, my expectation has not changed. So every day, every day, every day, the father would go out and see, is this the day? Lord, I feel like preaching now. 
Ah, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, is this the day? Is this the day? Huh, that's how you live. That's how you live. Because when you wake up, you, you go outside and say, is this the day? Because this could be the day that he's coming back. And I, I know he's coming. And, and so I'm moving in the direction to meet him. When you have expectation. The Apostle Paul writes and says that he has a crown of life. Uh, but he said, it's not for me only, but for all those that expect his appearing, that are looking for, anticipating that he's coming back. So when they heard that Jesus was coming, it elicited a response. And they took branches of palm and went forth to meet him. Ask your neighbor, yeah, we're going to mess with your neighbor today. Next week I'm going. I'm, I'm going to be praising. I'm going to be shouting. I ain't going. To look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. What, do what do you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, when they knew he was coming, then they just grabbed palm branches, and in one text. It says when they didn't have palm branches, they just started taking off their clothes and laying their clothes down in front of him. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to know we, we recognize in the Christian community, we recognize Palm Sunday, but wasn't no magic in palm. It was just a branch of a palm tree. But what they were doing it was bringing a form of worship. I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn the corner in a minute. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't, don't come empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we come to church empty. We come to church and don't even want to worship or praise. You don't have to have everything you want in order to praise. That's, that's, that's one of the mistakes we make. We, we actually say that and don't recognize how ignorant that is to say. Lord, as soon as you do this, I'm going to praise you. He's deserving of praise if he don't do anything. He's worthy. Tell your neighbor, don't come here empty. Don't come here empty. <laughs> David told you how to come. Enter his gates with Tetabashando by. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. When you're on your way here, you ought to come in with a praise in your mouth. Before his presence with singing, you ought to come in saying he's a wonder. He's a hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, don't come empty. Come in with your mouth all tight and your jaws all shut. And I don't feel like it today. That's the wrong way to come. Come. If you didn't do nothing but grab a palm, come. If you don't have a palm and you got a, a cloth, just come and lay that praise. Lay the praise before him because he's worthy. That's what worthy means, worth-ship. That's what worship is. He's, he's worth whatever I'm doing. If I sing, he's worth it. If I clap loud, he's worth it. If I praise him in the dance, he's worth it. If I roll on the floor, he's worth it. If... I don't know why y'all won't talk back to me. Shout at your neighbor and say, he's worth it, he's worth it. 
Whatever, whatever I give God, however I worship God, whatever I bring and I'm not coming empty, for me to come empty is a sign of thanklessness. It's a sign that I don't appreciate him. You come before the Lord, come with something. Yeah. Come with a faith-filled hallelujah. When they came, the Bible says that they laid the palms before him. But not only did they lay palms before him, you can't really have complete worship without opening your mouth. I tell you to praise God, the first thing you're going to do is clap. Clapping is good, but that doesn't complete your praise. Folk can clap when someone gives a performance. Folk can clap when they hit a home run or catch a touchdown. But when you clap, you have to, you have to signify what this praise is about. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you clap, your mouth ought to automatically open. Ah, ah. I, I want you to know that I, I'm tagging this clap, this, this applause, this appreciation. I'm, I'm, I'm tagging it, and the only way for you to know where this clap is going is for me to open my mouth. So as they laid that palm down, they opened their mouth and said, Hosanna. And Hosanna means, oh, save. Is, Hosanna is an exclamation of adoration. It means blessed. They said, Hosanna. Hallelujah. And that word means, as I stated, it's an exclamation of adoration. You ought to feel something toward God. Hosanna. I adore him. It's not just an, it's not just a casual affiliation. I adore him. I love him. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, maybe you don't love him as much as I love him. Yeah, I love him. I adore him. I, I can't live without him. I do. Life would be worthless without him. My soul delight in him. Hallelujah. I, I adore him. Some of y'all endure him, but I adore him. Some of you all put up with him. I, I see the way you look at me. It don't take all that. Well, that's because you don't love him like I love him. Hallelujah. Jesus gave the example of the woman that came in. Somebody preached it uh, not long ago. Jesus was in the house of Simon the leper. And it is, it's, it's in here. It's in here. The house of Simon the leper. And uh, the woman broke, broke in and uh, went to crying. And she had oil, but she was crying and 
wiping his feet with her hair. Couldn't stop the tears from flowing. And Simon the leper got upset and had the nerve to say if she knew, if he knew, was that, was that Wade that preached that? Uh, who? That was minister's class. All right. Said if he had known what kind of woman that was, because she is a sinner, he wouldn't have a kissing on his feet. Y'all, y'all would faint if somebody, don't, don't even worry about it. I'm, I'm going to keep my shoes on. But some people are appreciative. Lord have mercy. Simon, I came into your house. You didn't kiss me. You didn't give me water to wash my feet. This woman kissing my feet and washing my feet with her tears. Drying them with her hair. That's, that's, y'all forget that. Don't even, don't even put that in your mind. You, y'all leave church and say, I'm never coming back. I've never seen such display of the flesh. And he just sat there and let that happen. I'm, I'm out of here because he can't be my leader. But what they did not take, I'm just about finished. What they did not take into consideration was how this woman felt. He said her sins, which were many, have all been forgiven. I know you've been pretty good, but when I look back over my life and all the things that God has Look at your neighbor and say, I adore him, I adore him, I adore him. I'm trying to, they, they laid their palms before him and then they opened their mouths and they called him Hosanna. An exclamation of adoration. Then they said, blessed is the king of Israel. That word blessed is the word eulogio, where we get our word eulogy. And what it means is to speak well of. That is, religiously, it means to bless, to thank, or invoke a benediction of prosperity. So, they were lauding him with their verbal exclamation of adoration. They were saying things like, uh, he's a good God. He's a good God on a bad day. He's worthy of all the praise. Ain't nobody like him. I'm certain it was my father's favorite. He's a wonder. They were just blessing him. Just lauding praise upon him. Telling him how great he is. Letting everybody know in the community that he's my God. Something's wrong when you're afraid or intimidated by people to give God praise. All right, I ain't going to bother you. Just touch your neighbor and say, if you don't want to praise him, I just understand. You don't love him that much. You don't. 
I ain't going to say you don't like them. You just don't. So don't, don't get mad at me. Blame it on my heart and not my head because when I think, it should elicit a response of adoration. Can't help it. I love him that much. Yeah, well, I'm in public. I don't make any difference who's around. I love him that much. You can, I just don't care what company I'm in. You liable to hear, thank you, Jesus. At any given time. Well, I, I go to church. It's, it's not like I'm, I'm... Yeah, yeah, but you may not love him that much. <laughs> I love uh, Bishop Hines' mother. I, I had the privilege of not only preaching Bishop Hines' mother's funeral, but his father's funeral. They asked me to come and preach it. And uh, they were great people. He was, y'all see uh, Bishop Hines dancing. His father could dance like that. But now his mother, she was the female version of my daddy. <laughs> you, could be, you could be walking and talking about something, and all of a sudden she said, up, 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 up. go to speaking in tongues. And you could be talking about something just as, just as mundane, and she just go right off. Up, I think about Jesus. It's, and to, to, to Elder Hines, her, her husband said, you know, the folk could think I'm not saved the way your mama carry on. <laughs> Some folk just love him. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. I, ain't, I ain't trying to say I'm better than you. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm not, I'm not trying to say I'm better than you. I'm just saying I love him that much. that just the thought of him could induce a loud hallelujah. Ah! Told you I was in Cracker Barrel with my daddy. And we were sitting there just talking. And he went to talk about the Lord. And all of a sudden, as we were sitting, he said, Hey, go, oh Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was like, do you, do you. you I, it didn't embarrass me. Because I know you love him that much. Let, let me close. Let me, let me get to where I'm going. Hallelujah. from praise to glory. The praise is the adoration and the adulation of others. But the glory is the suffering. Yeah, I thought it would go down after that. We want the praise we just don't want the glory. Notice the language of the 23rd verse. Am I boring you? I hope I'm not boring. Notice the language of the 23rd verse. And Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. We're a week out. But he says the hour has come when I will be glorified. 
I've just been praised. But now I have to be glorified. In Christendom, we want to stop at the praise. And we deem the glory unnecessary. When the suffering comes is when we ask the question, God, where are you? And, and, and you have to love Jesus because he's right in it with you. I said he's right in it with you. Let's look at the, 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 the 27th verse and the first part of the 28th verse. And let's look at Christ's disposition as he moves toward the glorification. 27th verse. Now is my soul troubled. This is Jesus talking. Jesus said, I'm headed toward the glory. And my soul is troubled. That's almost an oxymoronic statement. He says, all in me is trouble as I move toward the glory. But what am I going to say? Because the glory is there. Uh, maybe I need to stop this and let y'all come back this afternoon. The glory is right there. I just finished the praise portion. Now I'm moving into the glory, and the glory is what has me troubled. I know it's coming. Look at your name and say, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. <laughs> now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Am I going to say, Father, save me from this hour? Change the plans? Because the glory is rough. The glory hurts. The glory puts you in a position that makes others say, why were they ever praising you? It makes the praise seem ridiculous because what were they praising if now you're walking into suffering? Nobody wants to suffer. Nobody wants to go through the pain. Father, save me from this hour. He says, I can't say that. But for this cause came I unto this hour. The glory Say the glory is what I'm after. Y'all ain't going to have to help me preach much longer. Look at your name and say, are you after the glory? Or are you just after the praise? Uh, if you're after the praise, then when the glory shows up, you're going to be troubled and you're going to stay troubled because you have to come to the resolve that I'm going through. I'm going to where God wants me to go. I'm not only going for the praise. 
I'm not seeking the adulation, but I'm going for the glory. Imagine the struggle of emotions of Christ. Hosanna. But here come the glory. Blessed is the king of Zion. They laying stuff in your way. That's the praise. But here comes the glory. And I can't fight this hour because I didn't fight the hour of praise. We need to understand that God is in control. I'm, I'm, I'm closing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop in four minutes whether I'm finished or not. He says in that 28th verse, Father, glorify thy name. In other words, Lord, do it, do it, do it, do it. I can't get out of it. I'm Look at your neighbor and say, I'm all in. I'm all in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm, I'm with the praise and I'm into the glory. Because God knows how to mix pleasure and pain. He balances trial and triumph. He blends victim and victory. And the reason he does that is to bring you to an unattainable glory. You can't get there if you don't go through the pain and the pleasure. Unless you allow God to take you through all of it, you will not get the unattainable glory that only comes when he mixes trial and triumph. I'm not a victim. Yeah, God will place you as a victim. Jesus was a victim of the cruelty of that religious order. He was a victim of the cruelty of the Sanhedrin and of the Roman government. He had to let himself become victim in order to gain the victory. I'm through. He said, God, glorify thy name. And then after he said that, God spoke from heaven. And this is what he said. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. I'm going to stop right there. Because just because you're going through the suffering does not imply you're not coming out. And when you come out, you're coming out with the glory of what you just came through. Ah, let me, let me, let me stop right there and say the enemy has cheated us because we look at the, the glory and uh, we shy away from it because of what we feel. And you do feel it. Just like Jesus felt it. Jesus said, my soul is troubled. So you're going to feel it. But what you feel should not stop you from moving forward. Yeah, my, my, my grown-up saints is going to get this. My, my saints with the big boy pants on going to get this. So you, you can't. You can't just live on the praise side. You got to come on up to the glory. Yeah. 
Wherefore seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run this race with patience that has been set before us looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross going here Look at your name and say, neighbor, Jesus saw the cross. Oh, Lord. But he said, I can't receive the praise and not go get the glory. He saw the cross, but he looked beyond the cross. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, keep on looking. Beyond that suffering is a glory that you can't get unless you go through it. I want a church that recognizes it's not about the adulation, it's about the glory. Yes, yes, tell your neighbor, neighbor, go get the glory. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame. Oh, if I can just get through it, if I can just get past it. Oh, Lord. And I heard Brother Paul say, I am convinced. He said it like this, I reckon the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared uh, to the glory yes look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm moving from praise into the glory everybody stand to your feet I feel like preaching, yeah, because there's something on the other side of this tribulation. Yes, the devil want to make me quit. He wants me to get in my flesh and say, you can do this, 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 and they'll understand. But oh, Lord, if I did this, this, and this, I may satisfy the flesh, but I'll never get to the glory. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's get to the glory. Oh, Lord. Feel like preaching. Yes, your talk is only going to last for a little while. Your lies are only gonna last for a little while. Your whispers are only gonna last for a little while. But if I can just go through it, I'm gonna get glory unspeakable. Gotta take my seat. But touch a neighbor and say, neighbor, let's go for the glory. Yes, don't be afraid of the trial, cause it's taking you to the glory. Don't be afraid of the tribulation, cause it's taking you to the glory. Don't be mad when people talk about you. They're only taking you 
to the glory. Yes, yes. As Brother Joseph, after he's sitting as the Prime Minister of Egypt, would you rather have the camaraderie of your brothers or would you rather be where God wants you to be? I'm sure he would say, I like my brothers, but I love the glory. And if I had to go through what I had to do to get to this glory, to God. Yes. Ah, Lord. It's all right if Brother Joel would talk to you. He said, I was messed up. My soul was troubled. But now, God has given me double for my trouble. I'm trying to encourage somebody. Don't give up now. Go through. Because there's an unattainable glory on the other side of that tribulation. Yes. Yes. Come on and give God praise. The next time somebody comes to you with a little smug look and a smart remark, look like you're going through. I thought if God was on your side, why are you, why are you going through all that? Just look at him and say, oh, I'm going from praise to glory. I don't, I don't have to sit down and explain all this to you. Just look at your neighbor and say, I'm going from praise to, to glory. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that this word resonates in the hearts of your people, that we do understand you know how to mix pain with pleasure, triumph with trial, victim with victory, that we might get through to the, to the glory. I rebuke the, the thought of giving up. Hallelujah. Because you know the way that we take. And when you've tried us, we're going to come forth. Thank you, Jesus. It's all right. It's all right. The devil wants you to, if you were so saved, you wouldn't feel bad. And all oh, Jesus' soul was troubled. I'm just a little troubled, but it ain't going to change my mind. I'm, I'm going for the glory. Right now, if, you, if you're going to do that, and I want you to open your mouth and give God a praise because... There's someone here that says, Pastor, I want to be saved. I want to give my life to the Lord. 
Come now. People, if you praise God, they will come. I mean, if you really praise them. If there's someone here that says, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to know the glory. People, if you give God adoration, open your mouth. I didn't just say clap. Give God praise right now. Anyone? Come on, come on, anyone today. Anyone today? Anyone else? I'll preach all day for one soul to get saved. For one soul to get saved. I'll preach all day. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, church. Come on, church. they're going to give you some more information. Let's thank God for these that have come. From praise to glory. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Ushers are coming. I need everyone to give today. I'm going to ask his sister Denise Baldwin here. Sister Denise Baldwin.
Is she here? Huh? Well, come on out the balcony. Hallelujah. Is she on her way down? Let's give God praise. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. Glory to God. Glory to God. From height to height. From depth to depth. From heart to heart and from breast to breast. The saints are to go from glory to glory. Come on, Sister Baldwin. From glory to to glory. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm upward bound. Lord, plant my feet on high ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand touch up by faith towards heaven's table land. A higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high ground. Says, Dear Pastor, I can hardly believe that I am writing this, but I have to be obedient. I have heard other people's testimonies following Sacrificial Sunday and rejoiced. God has always been faithful, always showing that we can't outgive him. But his, but this is the first time that I felt compelled to write. As always, I was excited about sealing consecration and sacrificial Sunday and gave with expectation. But I was completely taken by surprise when I received a letter dated February 9th from an organization saying that they had been trying to find me. They were distributing payments for a pension plan from a job I left more than 30 years ago that was no longer in business. Even more, I didn't even know the company had a pension plan. <laughs> but God. He continues to be more than faithful. And I know he's not done blessing me, expecting more in 2024. Sister Denise Baldwin, let's give God praise. I know he'll do it. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love that you have shown toward his name and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want everyone, even those that are watching by way of streaming, to give a significant seed this Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know he's going to do it. Father, I thank you for even the witness and the testimony of Sister Baldwin that you have blessings that we know not of. That as you gave us the word last week, that help is coming from unexpected places. Hallelujah. 
So we give in faith. In the name of the Lord Jesus, touch the hearts of many. There are those that are going to sow a seed of $1,000. Some may give $100, but I want you to touch them and give now that we might meet the need. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's stand with that seed in our hands. Last week, the Lord blessed with that message and someone came and said that, that what I had preached had been happening in their lives because they didn't come empty. They gave a check for $25,000. I, that, that's, I, that's not going to be uh, infrequent. That's what's going to happen. God's going to do this work. Amen. Amen. Lift that seed up, Father, it is of thine own that we give thee. Bless now both gift and giver according to their faithfulness and according to their cheerfulness. For it's not as a debt I owe, but as a seed I sow. Move your offering down to the end of the row. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. praise you're going to have to go through but you can endure once you understand the assignment amen you're going to go through because there is glory at the end amen hallelujah well praise God we thank God for our bishop we continue to pray for him and pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen him in the name of Jesus amen well we want to acknowledge all visitors in our Cypress sanctuary as well as in-house if you've been visiting, if you are visiting Perfecting Church, we thank God for you taking the time out of your schedule to come and worship the Lord with us. We know that the Spirit of God is in this place and that he's been nudging on you. We thank God for you. So let's give a round of applause for the visitors that are here, both in our cyber sanctuary as well as in-house. Well, Perfecting loves visitors, and we're going to continue to praise God for them. And at this time, we want to acknowledge all of our first-time visitors. If you're visiting Perfecting Church, if this is your first time visiting Perfecting Church, would you please stand? Hallelujah. If you're visiting, hallelujah. We, and remain standing. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. We thank God for you taking the time out. And our bishop says thank you. So at this time, 
we want to let you know that our ushers at this time are going to be giving you a visitor's card. Not a, a visitor's card, and would you please fill that card out? And at the end of service, one of our uh, members will be in the foyer with a sign similar to this one here, and they're going to take you to our bookstore in which you will receive a great gift. Amen? Remain standing as you continue to stand. Someone from Perfecting Church will get up and give you a big hug and show you some love. Hallelujah. Dusty roads to Calvary. Hallelujah. Grant me this privilege. Come lay your hand on me. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We thank God for you again. Hallelujah. Let's praise God one more time for our first time visit. Glory to God. Well, at this time, would you please give your attention to our video announcement? Good day, members and friends of Perfecting Church. It is time for the Perfecting News. Who's hungry? Now that we've been fed spiritual food, let's gather in the Gospel Bistro. Today's menu consists of perfectly fried chicken, delicious smothered and fried pork chops, mouth-watering macaroni and cheese, and delectable collard greens. Don't leave hungry. We are ready to serve you in the Gospel Bistro. Calling all men. Brothers, this is our last week of prayer and conversation. We will all gather Thursday from 645 until 730 p.m. for a powerful time of prayer, followed by great dialogue and fellowship. Men, let's show up. Good Friday returns this week. The members of Perfecting Church and Revival Tabernacle will worship together this Friday at 12 p.m., and we can't wait. Clergy of both churches will deliver the seven last words, followed by the dynamic ministry of Pastor Devin Goff and Bishop-elect Marvin Winans. Don't miss Good Friday at Perfecting Church. Come one, come all to Perfecting Church next Sunday for Resurrection Sunday at noon. Invite your family and your friends to join you to experience the Perfecting Church Mass Choir, Dynamic Kids of the Kingdom, the awesome liturgical dancers, and we know to expect a life-changing word from Bishop-elect Winans. Resurrection Sunday, 12 p.m., our Savior lives. Let's celebrate. We are in convocation mode. In a spirit of unity, PC, we are making plans to attend and signing up to serve. Give your attention to the video and complete your registration immediately following today's service. We are PFI. Get ready, get ready, get ready. It's time for the Holy Convocation. Pack your bags. All roads lead to Arlington, Texas, Monday, May 20th through Friday, May 24th. Holy Convocation proves to be the next level ministry with this year's evening worship speakers. Apostle Herman Murray, Bishop Kevin Wallace, Bishop Brandon Jacobs, Bishop Marvin Winans, and Pastor Brian Nelson. Every night includes dynamic singing with PFI's mass choir, praise and worship teams, and musical guests, Charisma Evans, Pastor Darrell and Lady Latanya Blair, and Kathy Taylor. The week gets better and better as PFI's own Pastor Dion Lamont leads us in morning glory. What would Holy Convocation be without workshops? Workshops are back and better than ever with Pastor Chauncey Brown, Pastor James Edwards, Pastor Maurice Yancey, Pastor Kimberly Ray, Pastor Daryl Blair, and Pastor James Lowe. But wait, there's more. All the way from Illinois, Pastor Kimberly Lee comes to Holy Convocation in a service for the women. And from Georgia, Pastor Mark Moore with a service for the men. 
And we always look forward to Friday morning service with Pastor Donnie McClurkin. Last year's PFI addressed the spiritual and natural needs of our community with prayer at the curb and food giveaway. And our mission continues in Texas. How do we close this week of dynamic singing, powerful preaching, empowerment, spiritual growth, and fellowship? There's only one way. The Singing Shepherds Concert on Friday night with host Baby Winans. Register today for Holy Convocation. Registration includes admittance to the workshops, discounts for product purchases, special recognition, admittance to a special general session with Pastor Mark Moore Jr., and tickets to the Friday night Singing Shepherds Concert. Discount group registration is available through your PFI church, or you can register online. Volunteers, we can't host convocation without you. Please sign up to serve. Visit the PFI website at www.pfi.world for the full schedule, hotel information, and to volunteer. Holy Convocation 2024, Monday, May 20th through Friday, May 24th in Arlington, Texas. We'll see you there. Feel free to contact our offices if you have any questions. Have a blessed day. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. My name is Sister LaShawn Hart, and I'm from the first Sunday 3 p.m. team of the hospitality department. Here to acknowledge and celebrate our mother's birthdays for the month of March. And mothers, if you are able, please stand as I call your names and one of our hospitality team members will present you with your gift. Mother Brenda Wright. Amen. Mother Beverly Orange. On behalf of our pastor, Bishop Winans, and our First Lady, Deneen Winans, and the entire Perfecting Church family, we would like to say happy birthday to you. It is our prayer that you continue to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, according to 3 John 1-2. We love you all. Thank you. Praise the Lord, Perfecting. We have a very special day today because we are going to be doing a book signing. Amen? We are so excited. The author is right here, Brother Willie Davis. The book is called Saving Grandpa Bill, and it is just a miracle of his testament. I'm going to let him speak. Praise God, family. God is good. God is better than good. I, I, I just want you all to know that this is not a weight loss book. This is a book about overcoming obstacles. I said it's a book about overcoming obstacles. Whatever your it is, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And I thank God for my wife. I couldn't have did it without her. Thank you, baby. And two weeks from now, we'll be celebrating our 44th wedding anniversary. So we're, we're just excited. The book sign is going to be in the back. I would love to see you all there, but like I said, this is, this is just the beginning. Bishop prophesied over me some years ago, and he said, it's bigger than you. And he always says, I never want to be where God was. I want to be where God is. I thank God for being in the isness of him. So we are encouraging everyone, please support Brother Davis and purchase his book. He's going to be signing it. 
The book signing is going to take place straight down the corridor as you're heading to the Gospel Bistro. It's going to be right there in the school lobby. So everyone, please just take a few minutes out of your day. Let's support Brother Davis. Let's read this book. It is a blessed, blessed book. And even those joining us in our Cyber Sanctuary today, you can call Perfecting Church this week. You can order the book. We'll send it to you, and he will even sign your book as well. So amen, Perfecting. We're going to be a blessing today. Amen. Church. I'm Sister Krishan Amada Merrill, your voice of perfecting, here to serve, um, to bring you the additional announcements and activities here at Perfecting. For those who purchase shovels for the groundbreaking, you may pick them up immediately following service today. Today is the last day to pick up your shovel. Members' graduation will take place today, and we encourage everyone to return to 3 o'clock p.m. service for this momentous occasion. Information for Holy Convocation, such as the, uh, the schedule of services in host hotels, can be obtained in the corridor or by visiting the PFI website at www.pfi.world. Everyone is asked to register. The last day to receive discounted registration is April 12th, so please don't delay. Have you signed up to serve at Holy Convocation yet? Please make sure you do so you can get a volunteer card from the ushers or scan the QR code on the screen. Remember, this is our convocation, amen? Perfecting Church will host, hold, host, sorry, baptism service Sunday, April 7th. If you desire to be baptized, email Vonda Parks at vparks at perfectingchurch.org or you may call the church office. We appreciate all visitors today, and if you are seeking a church home where the word is tight and the love is real, look no further. Our pastor is coming at this time to, send, to give an invitation for you to join Perfecting Church. Welcome home. Thank you for your attention. God bless you. I want to say two things. One, I want everyone to return this afternoon at 3 o'clock. We have over 20 people that are joining Perfecting Church this afternoon. Two, I want everyone that can and will to go see uh, Brother Willie Davis. He's been a faithful here, member here for years, and we've seen the transition and the journey. And so I want you to go and support that. And thirdly, if there's someone here that says, hey, this is where the Lord would have me, and I want to join Perfecting Church, you can come now. People, if you praise God, they will come. Anyone today? Jesus, come lay your head on me. Anyone that would come. Oh Jesus, come lay your head on me. Lift those hands and hearts. Is there something else we have to say? Father, as we go from this place, go with us. Give us to know that we're headed from praise to glory. We're going to make it. We're going to make it because you made it. You gave us the example. Have your way now. Let your grace and glory be upon all. Keep us in the center of thy will and as the apple of thine eye. Bring us back together again at the time appointed and we'll be careful to give you praise. In Jesus' name, hug three people, tell them I love God and I love you. I, I know. As you walk the dusty roads to Calvary, I know. 